Here with us in the studio now, Dr. Rajiv Shah, who is the uh, head of the U.S. aid program, and in Haiti, uh, Lieutenant General P.K. Keene, who is commanding the U.S. military force there. General, I want to uh, start with you. Uh, just by coincidence, you were in Haiti when this uh, earthquake happened, and you had quite a, quite a scare there. T tell us what happened. Well, sir, I was uh, staying at the ambassador residence. Like you said, we were there on a pre-planned uh, visit with about five of... Uh, uh, my fellow service members, uh, my executive boss and I were in the ambassador residence when the earthquake struck. Three of my personnel uh, were in uh, the Hotel Montana that completely collapsed. Uh, so I can tell you it was uh, uh, devastating and it, uh, it's like the Indiana Jones movie where the, uh, the whole earth shakes and we ran outside and uh, his residence really was swaying back and forth. Fortunately, it didn't collapse. And you had actually been planning to stay at the Hotel Montana, but the ambassador asked you and another member of your party to stay with him at the residence. Otherwise, you would have been in the hotel yourself. Uh, that's correct. Uh, and, uh, and fortunately, two of my personnel, they were seriously injured, uh, are back in the States being treated, and uh, we are still searching for one. How would you uh, uh, assess the situation right now, General? I'll just ask you first, have you ever seen anything like this? Well, I've been part of various uh, uh, disaster operations in my uh, career, but I've never seen anything uh, so uh, devastating and far-reaching. This is affecting uh, over three million people here in the Port-au-Prince area. I've flown over the area, I've walked through the streets, I've dro drove through the streets every day. And uh, you cannot go to any part of this city where it's not affected. Obviously, there are some areas that are much more affected by it than others. Uh, but uh, we're going to need the entire world and the international community to respond. And we're seeing it happen. Every day it gets more. And we're very grateful for the support that we're getting from our nation and all those around the world. Dr. Shaw, uh, what, uh, what is the biggest problem now that you see? Because, I mean, already we're hearing some people, although the response is, some people are saying we, we should have gotten in there faster. Well, thank you, Bob, and thank you for the opportunity to be here. Just building on what the general said, uh, you know, this is an unprecedented situation and an unprecedented natural disaster. And commensurate with that, the president, immediately after this happened, uh, had pulled together the whole of government and said, uh, that he wanted a swift and aggressive response that was well coordinated and done in partnership with the Haitian government. So we, I was in Haiti yesterday with uh, the general, with President Preval of, of Haiti. They welcome and thank the President, President Obama for this partnership. And, you know, we're doing exactly that. We uh, deployed immediately our disaster assistance response teams. We had the first people on the ground were our ur urban search and rescue teams. These are teams of more than 70 people each. We have five uh, five in right now, and so we have a few hundred professionals well equipped with dogs out there saving people. And that's been a uh, success. Our teams alone have saved dozens of people, mostly Haitian. Uh, they've also coordinated an effort with uh, 27 other countries, almost 30 other teams, mm -hmm. to help do that. Let me go back to the general. Uh, general, what is the, uh, the main problem now? Uh, we were told by our correspondents there that it's the bottleneck at the airport. Apparently, it's a little better than it was, but it's not so much getting the aid to the airport, it's getting it out into the countryside. Well, we're doing better every day. Yesterday was a very good day. We, uh, with paratroopers of the 82nd Airborne Division, they delivered over 70,000 bottled water and they delivered over 130,000 rations. And that's just what we delivered. Of course, our partners here with the United Nations forces were doing the same thing in the international community and the various organizations. But we need to do more and we need to do it faster and we're building the capacity, as we noted earlier, to do that. This is a challenging logistical uh, problem. We've got one airport that uh, only has uh, one runway and one taxiway. We've got the best airmen in the world here who arrived within 24 hours to open this airport so it could run 24 hours a day. Uh, it does appear to be relatively calm, but there do, there do seem to be increasing incidents uh, of violence. Uh, how is the law and order situation right now, General? Well, as you note, there are uh, isolated uh, incidents of uh, violence, but I can tell you our paratroopers were out yesterday delivering humanitarian assistance, and everywhere they went, they were warmly welcomed by the Haitian people. They uh, uh, stood in line and uh, were uh, very uh, warmly uh, receiving our paratroopers. I'm very grateful for that aid. Uh, at the same time, uh, we had some isolated incidents. Security uh, is a key component 
of a humanitarian assistance operation. We need to create a safe and secure environment to ensure we're able to do everything we can. Uh, our United Nations troops who have been here on a mission of security and stability continue with that mission, but they also have transitioned into humanitarian assistance, right. so the capacity to provide adequate security will be a challenge. Uh, what is the, uh, uh, Dr. Shaw, what is the main problem at this end now? Well, we're, we're working on, on multiple issues uh, simultaneously. One is securing commodity flow and getting that into Haiti. Uh, the military has been very successful at increasing the throughput by more effective management of the airport. That's been a great first step. Uh, we now need to expand alternate routes, including port and sea access, and we're working in partnership with the Department of Defense to make that happen as absolutely as quickly as possible. The second is we're, we're trying to dramatically expand the in-country distribution network. So we're working with our partners around the world, as the general mentions, to identify as many major distribution points as we can, get those secure, improve transport to those points, uh, and really dramatically accelerate commodity flow there. All right. Uh, I'm sorry we have to stop there. Sure. But thank you both very much. I'll let you both get back to work.